Hi, gents. Welcome to another episode of our podcast. Um, today, we want to invite all of you to just stop, to pause a bit, and to uh, reflect on the moment here with us and with God mm. uh, just over the course of this year. In this episode, we want to acknowledge uh, what God has done for us so far during this year mm. um, in our lives, uh, in our groups, and we shared so much information during our podcasts. And uh, this is a perfect moment just for us to reflect a little yeah. bit on that. Okay. Um, there's also so much in other areas of our lives that, that have happened in our environments around us, where you live. Uh, and even politically in South Africa, we've, uh, Eddie, we've gone through a, a voting session without um, uh, any violence erupting in our yeah. country. And so I'm really thankful yeah. for what God has done for us um, as mm. mentoring guys, but also wider than that. So mm. let's recognize how far we've come. Yeah, I agree with you, Grant. I think when you get to, um, to a space halfway through the year, I think you always want to go and, and, and look back and say, well, what's happened this year? You know, how did I grow? How did I do? And I know... Um, in everyone's world, there's always measuring um, components that we measure ourselves against and our growth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in our relationship and our walk with God, sometimes, you know, our measurement is the word. Yeah. And, um, um, but I want to encourage all of us that uh, even through the stories that we've been hearing, mm -hmm. um, through um, the groups and through the leaders is... How amazing God has been uh, to most of us, I think uh, myself included, about how the journey has gone so far with what we've been dealing with regarding being emotionally healthy, mm -hmm. growing, um, realizing that we're not perfect, being able to discover some things that's not always that wonderful, but in the process being thankful that we're now aware of it and yeah. that we have an opportunity actually um, to work on that, and that we're not alone, Grant. Yeah. Uh, we've got one another, and most importantly, we've got God, we've got Holy Spirit that's leading and guiding us. And, um, and I think um, that's something important to mm. just recognize and to, and to pause on and mm. be grateful mm. for, mm. is the fact that we don't have to journey alone. Yeah. I, I also know that um, we've spoken about this, that there's a lot of, if I can include myself in, in this space, mm. A lot of us that feel, well, am I really making it? And we had a conversation where we just encourage one another to, to say, well, Grant, there is a place where you yourself have to take up your cross mm. and follow Jesus and be his disciple uh, through, as you mentioned, through the Holy Spirit. He is with us. He's dwelling with us mm. and he's encouraging us. And yeah. I know that you shared a story about your dad with me that mm. I just want you to share with, with the guys. Yeah, um, forgive me if I do get a bit emotional. I think um, it's almost a year now that he's, um, that he's been gone. Um, but you know what, Grant? I think he's, he's, he's walked such a road of faith and faithfulness. Mm. And, you know, he, I always had a perception, um, you know, where um, he... Let's put it this way, he's always positive. Mm. He's always looked at things through the filter and the eyes of faith. Like nothing is impossible with God. When he was on construction sites, um, you know, before he would buy pills, he would call uh, a guy in to the container, pray for him. The guy would um, instantly, the, the headache would disappear. You know, he was wow. the type of guy that would... Um, say, God, you know what, there's, there's a need. Mm. Um, and, and there's days that he would just sit in front of God and cry mm. and say, God, what is, what, this is really the cry of my heart. This is what I, I need right now. And then, you know, I remember once he always spoke to me and my brother about, you know, how he really desires just to close up his house and build a wall around his house. And he's been praying for years. Over it. And one day he just got a phone call. And um, 
one of this guy said he was spending time with the Lord in the morning and God sp spoke to him and said he needs to build a wall around Heinz house. Wow. And, um, and I mean, he said to my dad, get the, get the quote and um, got the quote, signed off on it and my dad was able to build a house and he said, you know, I'm not just going to build a wall, I'm going to put up a, a, a motor gate for you as well. Wow. And you know what, Grant, that's what encourages me so much about my dad's walk in this and hopefully this encourages all of us is that my dad was never called for construction. He's call and his heart was, was to minister to people, mm. to care for people. Mm. And um, I want to read you something that I read, um, you know, even before we started um, this recording. But, you know, if you think about Jesus, Jesus was a carpenter. Mm. And that was never his calling. But it was um, God busy preparing him in everyday life. You know, there's days that my dad even w woke up and he didn't got paid for six months or so. But in the process, he did that job regardless as if he was being paid the big bucks. And, um, and you know what? Sometimes uh, what I learned was God doesn't build our lives on the spectacular, mm. but he builds our lives on the daily routine of faithfulness and obedience. And that's what stood out about my dad's walk of faith. It's about being faithful in the small things, in the big things, being obedient mm. um, and being grateful. Every single day uh, when I talk to him, he's always an encouragement. And, um, and you know what? I think through our natural responsibilities and things, God reveals things to us mm. which we can grow in and walk in and... Um, and, you know, realize that, you know, you don't have to be a big superstar, plant seven churches, run 50 companies or be a manager of 100 employees. But God can use the most. And I don't mean this in a demeaning way or to a dishonoring, dishonoring way, but the, the, the word says that God will use the imperfect mm. and the shameful things of this world mm. to shame the wise. And, um, and that's not a criticism towards anybody out there, but it's just sometimes we think we are unqualified. Mm. And sometimes we think we uh, have not grown, we've not made it, we mm. feel like failures, mm. we feel... And we can overwhelm us. Completely, but then we stop. And we realize, but, but God has been faithful. Mm. And if I look back at my dad's life now, I look at so much and so many other stories mm. of how faithful God is. And to me personally, I'm grateful for that. Mm. When I go through things and through moments where I, I feel um, maybe discouraged or maybe that I've not grown or not progressed in an area like I wanted to, um, if I have to assess myself, I look back and I say, you know, but God is working. Mm -hmm. He is faithful. He will come through at the right time. And He knows exactly what I need, not necessarily my wants. He does. He's aware of that. And I make Him very aware of that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's what I need at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's just going, waking up every single day, making a choice to follow Him mm -hmm. and try and be faithful in everything that we do. And for me, that's faith, Grant. For me, that's that's progress. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's that's walking faith. So, out of my dad's story, I think that's one thing I take mm -hmm. out of it is 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 just walking faithfully. And and even the scripture we connected to his funeral was walking in faith and not even seeing the promises come to pass. Sure. Uh, but yet, mm -hmm. he was unwavering in trusting God and being faithful with what is in his hand. And, um, and that, that just speaks volumes to me. Yeah. What a testimony of someone not giving up. Mm. And uh, I can hear a lot of thankfulness in his mm. journey, even though his journey was difficult yeah. um, over the course of his life. Okay. A scripture that 
really stood out for me in glorifying God. Uh, mm. I think it's a key scripture for us. Mm. Um, in our faith walk is Acts 16, verse 25 to 34. Love that. And we all know the story, and it's about Paul and Silas. They were preaching, and they were um, admonished to not preach in a, a specific area again. And they were arrested, and they were badly beaten, and they were thrown in prison. Mm. And um, so I'm just going to read that because this, this is mm -hmm. something just stood out for me in that scripture. It says in verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Mm. And the other prisoners were listening to them. And then just to paraphrase, suddenly we know there was a violent earthquake. The doors flung, flung open, the shackles fell off, um, and, the, you know, and, and the prisoners saw all of this. The, the prison guards ran away, but the head of the prison stayed, and he wanted to commit suicide because he thought everyone ran away. Wow. And uh, then Paul and Silas called out and said, we're all still here. Mm. And what stood out for me, and I, I've read this, I want to say hundreds of times, but I, I read this a lot over the years, and then suddenly this just popped out for me. Mm. It says that they praised, uh, they honored God, and the other prisoners listened. You see, what, what is busy happening during this year in our lives is we committed in mentoring to walk a road with God on working on ourselves internally. Mm. And it's not in a selfish way. No. It's really aligning with what God is doing in telling us through his word so and, and doing in one, one another's lives. Mm. And so when God is working in, on a specific space in our lives, it's painful. Mm. We can sometimes feel that we are beaten up we can sometimes feel that we are in a prison. Mm. And then God calls us to praise Him. And it doesn't make sense. And I even want to go as far as saying that when you work on, your, on yourself, mm. there's a natural praise that emanates from your heart space mm. that mm. touches you. God hears that. Mm. I'm not saying that your prison will open. That's but true. I will say that you are walking in that and mm. the the work that you're busy doing is a praise towards God. Mm -hmm. What's very interesting, it says, the other prisoners listen to that. Mm -hmm. and that's the aim of our years, uh, being outward focused. Mm -hmm. And so people look at us, they see us working on ourselves, mm -hmm. and that is natural praise to God. Yeah. That will naturally speak to people yeah. of us walking, taking up our cross, Mm. working in those difficult spaces, mm. and that glorifies God naturally. Such a nice uh, story. And the story obviously ends where the head of the prison said, what can he do to be saved? And he was saved that day. Wow. And I think this is, I want to proclaim this in faith, this is what is busy happening to us as guys. Isn't that the biggest miracle, Grant, that, um, you know, it's not necessarily that circumstances have changed, but a life was changed. Mm. And he suddenly was set up for eternity. Yeah. And he could live his life aiming towards that finish line because he has Christ. Mm. And in that process, as he walks out his salvation with fear and trembling, he would grow just like we have. But his moment came when two other guys was willing to show gratitude and thankfulness towards the Lord mm. regardless. And, and even in the honesty and the transparency that Paul and Peter had, like you just mentioned, they refused to run away or walk wherever. They want to walk in honesty and integrity. Mm. So, and that testifies so much about God's character and who He is to them. And, and it was so authentic that it was, it pulled, it pulled him yeah. straight towards Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and, and you know what, I, I just want to just also contribute to, to that, if I may grant, um, also with a scripture. And um, this has been a scripture that's also been something that I've been, been looking at and um, I've preached on it as well. But... It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, it says, Rejo Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Mm -hmm. And I know we don't always want to rejoice and we don't always take delight in our circumstances. Uh, he says, 
but um, be unceasing and persistent in prayer. And in every situation, no matter what circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. is that we continuously show gratitude. And, um, and, 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 and I think if we can, as we said in the beginning, stop and pause um, and just look back, regardless of what went wrong or what we found and didn't find, can we just uh, take a moment just to say, God, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for my group. Thank you for some of the things that we've been working through this year, what, I've been, uh, what you've allowed me to walk through. And thank you for your grace that you've shown towards me, the, the mercy, the, the forgiveness, um, and being able just to be aware of it and, and say, you know what, this is, this is where I really am. Yeah. I'm not perfect, but I want to be healthy. Amen. I want to be someone that at least can sit in my prison and give thanks. And as you said, my prison doors might not open up or my walls will not crumble down, but I've got a gratitude because eternally in my heart I've got Christ. Yeah. And that's what matters Amen. at the end of the day. So thank you for encouraging me, Grant. Thank uh, you, Eddie. I also think for your encouragement. It was yeah. such an such a encouraging um, scripture that you read. And um, yeah, and I think. Um, from my side, I think that was just a short um, moment that we take today just to, just to say thank you to God. And I um, want to encourage you guys in this time is go, look, go, go back to some of the material that we've already done. Go look at some of the things and journal on some of the things that God has, has done in your life this year. And, um, and, and let's just put the negative stuff to one side and allow the joy of the Holy Spirit to fill you and encourage you mm -hmm. so that you can know that He's not, he's not there to bring uh, guilt and shame, mm -hmm. but, uh, but bring a conviction to change so that we can give Him glory and so that we can be grateful and celebrate Him at the end of the day. Not because we are so amazing and faithful and obedient but because he is faithful uh, and he sticks with us regardless of our mess and i think that's what's so amazing so i really trust that you guys have enjoyed this episode today and that it will encourage you and that you will encourage the people around you to be grateful and be thankful for what god has done thus far in in 2024 amen grant amen eddie here we go. Guys, have a wonderful time and we'll see you in the next episode.